This month, our theme is, it is well. Say it with me, it is well with me. Oh, say it to somebody, it is well with me. And look upstairs and say it is well with me. You're asking God to confirm that it is well with you. I think I would just want to remind you where that comes from. A couple got married. God prospered them. And they were righteous. But in their love for God, in their righteousness, they didn't get the benefit, all the benefits they ought to have in marriage. They didn't have a child. They had tried over time, but baby did not come. But listen, it didn't stop them loving God wonderfully. It did not stop the promises of God. They never looked down on God because of the challenge that did not materialize. They kept on loving God. Until, listen, they gave up on their need and still said, I will love you forever. And the need was a visible, tangible, necessary need. Yet, they said, our time has passed, but we will still love you even though this was not fulfilled. Listen to me. It's a different church today. When people know God that level, to that level, but their needs are not met, after some time, their love for God will begin to grow cold. They'll begin to murmur. They'll begin to look for somebody else to put the blame on. And so this couple continued loving God, serving God, worshiping. And one day, they said, the wife said, wait, honey, that man of God, that comes on a circuit. Anytime he comes, let's build an accommodation for him as an annex to our house and let him stay there so that he can have time to concentrate and to consecrate that he may focus on God and receive the fullness of ministry. And the husband said, yes. And today, what we will call a granny annex that's what they built. Listen, anybody who's built a granny annex will tell you that the minimum it can cost here is 30,000 pounds. That's the minimum a granny annex can cost. And they built it for him. And the man of God, Elijah, anytime he comes around, he knew that that's the place for him. He stayed. Then one day he said, he called her. He said, what can I do for you? Should I speak to the prime minister? She said, no. And in those days, after the head of state, you must talk to the military commander. He said, can I talk to the military commander for you for anything? She said, no, I'm sufficient. Ha! And um, Elijah was wondering, what can I do? This lady says she's sufficient. And then Gehazi said, my boss. She doesn't have a child. What? You don't have a baby? According to this time, next year you would have a baby. And the woman laughed. The woman said, man of God. I like that woman. She said, man of God. You know, today many people can't recognize men of God. They just mix up everybody. Men of God and men of the world and men of demons are all mixed up. Now, that woman said, man of God, don't lie to me. It's not that we didn't need a baby. It's not that we didn't try. But it didn't come. But it didn't stop us loving God. It didn't stop us building this place for you because they built it. It wasn't an excess accommodation. It wasn't a situation with most of us that the children have come and the children have left. So you have spare room. No, it wasn't a spare room. They built it. That's why it cost money. How much can we sacrifice when there is a glaring, visible need that brings shame? They didn't care. I like the Bible. It says of Jesus, despising the shame. 
Say after me, I would despise my shame. Say it again, I would despise my shame. I will keep on following God. But by the time next year, baby came. And the man of God kept coming. And baby began to grow. And I think at about age six. And when your child is six, and your child can be a lecturer, because he would ask every question. Mom, what's that? Not just the what, why? 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 And children, why never ends. Not African children, no. Children born here, why? why? And it's good. Yesterday I went out with my grandson. Grandpa, why? Where are we going to? And why are we going? We got there. Why are you parking? And why? And let me tell you, I do have some answers. <laughs> why? 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 And I started saying, God, I'm glad that I am. I do have my children here. Two of them were here, two of them from there. Because the children born here, why? Why? You go to the supermarket, why are you buying toilet paper? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> and so the boy went with the dad. And the boy said, dad, headache, headache, headache. And like most dads, told the servant, take him to your mom. And the Bible says, when the servant brought the child to the mom. Mom put the boy on his lap and said, okay, maybe she embraced him. Maybe she hugged him. Maybe she began to pray. Maybe she smothered him. Maybe, you know, she was doing all a mother would do medically. And I can tell you, every mother is a sub-doctor and sub-nurse. They know what to do. And the mom, until she looked at the boy, The breathing until the boy passed. And that woman just picked that boy, went to the prophet's bed, laid him there, shut the door. Very respectful woman, very humble woman, sent to her husband, I'm going to see the prophet. Why are you going? It is not the usual time. Don't worry, honey. Didn't tell the husband the boy had died. Didn't tell him. If not, the man would have rushed home. No, so the man did not know his only son had died. And the woman said, servant, just keep speeding on this ass. And asses are not horses. Horses can speed. Horses are not, asses carry load. Have you seen, you know, a trailer, double trailer load? That's an ass. It's a carrier of burden. A horse is not a carrier of burden. A horse is a vehicle for warfare to intimidate opposition. The ass is a load carrier, so it goes slow, one step at a time. And when the ass gets angry, you will just sit down. And no amount of weeping will wake up an ass. I know I lived there with them. She got to the man of God. The man of God spied her and said, Oh, look, that Shunammite is coming. And send the servant. And the servant asked three questions. Is it well with you? And what was the answer? It is well. Is it well with your husband? What was an answer? It is well. Is it well with the child? What was the answer? It is well. Listen. Even when things are horrible, the fact that you start confessing from your heart it is well, it will become well. Never lose your confidence of faith in God. The clouds may be dark. Darkness can stare at you in the face that you see no light. But never lose your confidence in God. And let it, confidence is from the heart, not what you see. Let me tell you five things that had happened. There was death, the last enemy. Even when the last enemy had struck, still hold on to God. Tell somebody, hold on to God. Number two, there was devastation, not just death. Death had taken place. Listen, that woman cannot have another baby unless by a miracle. 
She can't have another baby. She's too old. There was destruction. Two of them were passed on. And the devourer had come. No legacy. Who would take her inheritance? Remember, they were super rich. Maybe give it to the state. But she never doubted God. She never doubted God. Say, I will never doubt God. Yes. And that's why this month, whatever you see, whatever stares at you in the face, whatever nightmare you have, whatever you hear, listen, never doubt God. Continue to say, it is well. That's what you should continue to say. Whatever happens. And as we look at that this month, Next week, we'll be looking at It is well with my soul. Today, we're looking at It is well with my spirit. After that, then it is well with my body. And then the last Sunday of the month, It is well with my family. God is on your side. But as we look at It is well with my spirit. With your spirit. Let us see what the spirit says at this time. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 14, In my father's house there are many mansions. Don't worry, I'm going to prepare accommodation for you. Don't be bothered. And he tells us things that will happen more than 2,000 years. Now whom tells us about satellite? Satellite. The prophet tells us that there will be satellite transmission. That's before Jesus. People didn't understand it. Even 70 years ago, none of us understood what the satellite transmission. That today your cell phone, everybody has cell phone. But look at, God declares the end from the beginning. And today we'll be looking at how he declared... This period. This period. And I'm going to sit on 2021, the first five months. I'm just going to show you things that had happened, but Jesus had said in this year, in fact, four months, February to May, just four months. Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to read from verse 3. And we will carry on. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what would be the sign of your coming? And what would be the end of <clears throat> the age? We're just looking at, where are you? Where is your spirit? Where is your spirit? Is it well with your spirit at this time? Verse 4, and Jesus answered and said, take heed that no man deceive you. Please listen. If you are not careful, you can be deceived. Never get to the point that you think you can't be deceived. I am amazed, listen, I am amazed that a church that is 10,000, 10,000 strong. Church, I didn't say club. I didn't say school. After there are multiplied, multiplied, multiplied revelations that the pastor is using demonic power and he's been sleeping with people, with ladies. After they have dug the pulpit, dug up, and they have found bones. They found fetus, children that have just been born. They found it. Listen, the people still remained. I'm not talking about 1940. I'm talking about now. Listen, they didn't go to school. It wasn't school. They went to church where Jesus is supposed to be Lord, where the Bible is supposed to be the book for all of them. 
These people are learned, they can read, but they still stayed. Take heed that you be not. Take heed. Be careful, be cautious. Listen to the Holy Spirit, not just the human spirit. Because you can be deceived. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive. What's the next word? Many. They will come in the name of Christ and will deceive many. We're going to talk about false prophets later on. And you would hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you'll be not troubled. Say, I won't be troubled. Say, I'm not troubled. Whatever you hear, the news, the news, the news, wars and rumors. Your spirit is too married to the spirit of God. You are not troubled. For all these things shall come to pass, but the end has not come. But nation will rise against nation, and then verse 8, this is the beginning of sorrows. Now verse 9, and they will deliver you. They will deliver you. To tribulation and kill you. Listen to me. When it comes to the place, the government is killing its own people. It means the government does not take the people serious, and the government does not take the church serious. And it's happening now. And many shall be offended. You know what that means? People who are Christians will say, mm, I think I'd better slow down. What I'd believed, you know. They will go on. And shall then betray one another and hate one another. There are many false prophets. They will rise and deceive men. But he that endures to the end shall come. And then the end will come. Let's just go to verse 7. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes. Remember, just when he's about to come. Have earthquakes not been there? They've been there. Have famines not been there? They've been there. But I want you to look at 2011. 2011. Let's look at earthquakes in 2011. In February 13th, there's an earthquake, 7.1 on the Richter scale in Japan. February 2021, sorry. In March 3rd, there was another earthquake. It was at the Richter scale, 6.3 in Greece. In March 5th, there was another earthquake 7.3 in the rich Cascade in New Zealand. Then in the same New Zealand, another at 7.4 in the rich Cascade. But when you know New Zealand, let me tell you, New Zealand is down south. Real south, south, south. Japan is up north. All within three months. Have there not been earthquakes? There have been earthquakes, but sometimes 20 years, 40 years, 50 years. Now it is every month. That tells you, Jesus, the times in which we live. Earthquakes are quakes on the earth, and there is tremor. And you just find your, your, you know, your chair. Shaking. People fall off from the bed. I don't know if you've been on the sea and you're on your bed, cabin. And when the sea is rough, it throws you down from, your, from the bunk. It throws you down when the sea is rough. When you have a 50 feet wave that banks on one side of the sea, take, take this, from the floor to the ceiling, it's just about 25 feet. You think of double that. Now heating a ship, especially if it's a yacht, a small yacht, it tilts so bad that it throws you down. That's why some people don't like going, <laughs> going on some sea journeys, especially if it's small, a small boat. 
you know, my mom and our baby, my baby sister, the last girl, we are paddling. And they saw a hump, looked at it. By the time they navigated around the hump, they found it was an hippo. Nobody tells you that the speed at which you will roll, <laughs> if not, um, you just be... They run for their lives. We come to volcanoes. Still within four months this year. In February 16th, there was a volcanic eruption in Sicily, Italy. By March 19th, it was in Iceland. Iceland, Iceland north. North. Six months of snow. Seven months of snow. That's why it's called I, the land of ice, Iceland. On April 9th, it was St. Vincent in the Caribbean. March 22nd, it was now the Democratic Republic of Congo. All in two months. Volcanic eruptions didn't happen like that. They have always been, but the space of time. But look at the frequency and look at the span. And verse 7, when Jesus was talking, he said, the question is, when would the end be? And he started answering those questions. You know, concerning UFO and USO, maybe some of you have never heard of USO. I know you know of UFO. UFO is <clears throat> unidentified flying objects. But USO is equally unidentified sea. Some have come, and Barack Obama, because he was a president. You know, all presidents, all nations keep quiet. They say it's classified, classified. They don't talk about it, classified. Barack Obama, since he was a president, he read all those classifications and classified. But on the 16th of March, publicly, he said, we know, we confirm that it is real, but we don't know what it is. The speed at which they travel, even helicopter that lifts from the ground, it takes time to go this way. Helicopter cannot go this way, go this way at the same time. But the UFOs would just zap, zip, like at the speed of light, you find it two miles and it's up. And then microsecond is back here and it goes this way. They have said, we don't have the technology to do this thing. It's not human. It's not scientific. They checked out the one that came to a carrier. You know, a carrier, basically, it's an aircraft carrier. That's why a carrier, a big ship that sometimes have 80 bombers and, um, you know, F-16, <clears throat> F-15, and then will carry an AWAC. AWAC is the plane that has a dome on front. It's actually aircraft warning system. It stays, and it could track any aircraft in any direction for 400 miles and can say, and then radio to control. At this altitude, this speed, there is an aircraft coming, so get ready. That's an AWAC. It continues like that. They said, we are seeing things we haven't, we don't understand. But wait a minute. Listen. When you come to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, and as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses appeared and separated Elijah and Elisha. And Elisha went up 
to heaven in a wild wind. It spins, zap, it has gone. So we know this. Horses don't fly, but the horses from heaven fly. Horses don't carry fire, but the horses from heaven can carry fire. Listen, all I'm saying is there is the divine vessels of warfare, of transportation, but there is the demonic vessels of transportation also. The devil can do everything God does except holiness. Except righteousness. The devil does everything. Nebuchadnezzar said, all of you astrologers and magicians, one, remind me of my dream. I've forgotten it, but you must know. Search it out. Number two, get the interpretation. Number three, tell me, if not, you are headed, not for the mortuary, you are headed for the grave. So Nebuchadnezzar knew that there, are spirit, there is spiritual intelligence. Pharaoh had spiritual intelligence. Between Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 2 and Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2 is more than a thousand years. So there has always been spiritual but demonic intelligence and power. Now, these UFOs, where do they attack? Where do they attack? Power plants. If you knock out the power, everybody will be in darkness. There are some of us from a country that understand power court. And that's why that country is full of generators. And some people have three generators. One for light, one for fridge, one for the air conditioners. <laughs> Three generators in one house. And in the night, boop, 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 everything is just. But you think of this country that they just knock out electricity. No mobile phone would work. The hospitals just go on a tailspin. Everything would collapse. When we designed hospitals in theater design, we give the theater a separate air conditioning system, a separate light system, because you can't open up somebody and then light goes. You want the person to die? We always have a UPS for just each theater. And I remember, I think it was loot, you have eight theaters. Each of those theaters has its own complete package of power supply. But let me tell you this, the demons can knock out everything. So the UFOs target power plants. Number two, military installations. Naval bases. Cripple the military and the Navy. The whole country has surrendered to any enemy. To the Navy, anybody coming by sea. To the military, anybody coming by land. And that's where the things appear. They come and stay. Rise up a hundred feet and you see it. And then come down and zap, they have gone. UFOs. In verse 12 of Matthew chapter 24, he says there are over famines. Now, we in the West, we understand that. Africa doesn't understand farming too much, except where there is drought. During the pandemic, the farmers in Africa went to farm. The farmers here, they said, stay at home, quarantine. Milk went up. The pandemic, just 18 months, the woes it caused, health, how many people died? How many people died? There are a number of people that died in the UK alone. Listen, with all the wars UK had had, we surpassed it within one year. The Romans came here. 
waged war. Hitler tried to come here. He killed some people. The Nazis tried. The Romans tried. But the pandemic, one day, 3,000. That's only London. 3,000. Health woes. Financial trouble. Oh, I didn't understand it until last week I interviewed. I was chatting with one, um, one sister who is a nurse. I said, sister, she said, oh, they closed down our unit, the, her hospital. They closed it down and took her to another unit far away. When she told me where it was, I said, that's very far from your house. She said, oh. Pastor, there was no problem because every day they sent Uber to take me from my house to that hospital. When they finished, take me back. I said, how much was Uber? She said, it's 40 or 45. Every day. I said, so that's where all my tax money had gone. And they did that for 10 months. Every day. Took her there, took her back. And after 10 months, they stopped. And it even with Uber, it was two hours from a house to the location, two hours back. A wasted life. So I now saw why the government had to print a lot of money to keep us going. But all the money to, they printed to keep us going, we are in debt and debt and debt. I now saw why those on do don't want to work. Because, listen, taxes would rise. On Friday, when I finished here, I was going home. I got to a train station to do some business. And um, when I finished the business, as I opened the door of the car, my cell phone fell out. I had the noise, but it was in the night to 10. I said, what was that? I drove home. Fortunately, you know, my cell phone doesn't have a password. So it was easy. They picked it, and they did that. They saw Darling there, so they ran. Darling, my wife picked it. They said, oh, you are dialing to who? Do you, do you don't have this cell phone. <laughs> and my wife couldn't reach me since the cell phone was already somewhere. Said, uh, come and get it. So she had, my wife had to tell them, okay, when he gets home, then he will go over. And that place was very far from my house. Okay, I got home. My wife said, where is your cell phone? I said, I think it's in the car. <laughs> He said, look, you dropped it. They've collected it. Now, listen to the thing. The person who took it has got six children. I told myself, six children, you are staying in a council house. What's your future for these children? Okay, I eventually got there. I like the guy. He sent, he came out. He sent the children, so on, one, one. And they brought the food. That guy will not go to work. Your tax and my tax will fund him forever. Because with the debt we have now, yeah, it's even good. America has trillion dollar debt because of COVID. Trillion dollar debt because of COVID. So those working, the taxes will go up, you will pay. So those on do will sit down. Because they would ask themselves, if I work and I've got my tax ban is this, I wouldn't enjoy the money. No wonder that guy has six children. Those of you who have only two, please. All I'm trying to tell you is we are in trouble economically. The whole world. The whole world, we are in trouble because, listen, Jesus saw it more than 2,000 years ago. He saw it. How many hotels closed down? All. Even big hotels, Hilton, all of them laid off 80, 90% of staff. Just laid them off. Because what's the use paying staff that have no work to do? Well, for some hotels, the government took over and put nurses, medical staff there. For some, not all. 
B and B's were on holidays for the entertainment industry. They were in deep waters. Jesus saw it. In verse 12 of Matthew chapter 24, he said, Many will be offended because of me. In the United States, in 1999, 70% of the population attended church. In 2020, it had come down to 40%. Listen, the church was crippling. Other religions were rising. Especially negative religions. The church, the pillar of faith, the light of God. Laborers were deflated. God, where are you? You've closed the church. God, where are you? Some were not only deflated, some were defeated. That was it. Then some were demonized. Some said, since Jesus cannot help, and I've seen help from other places, they've gone to those other places where they have got power. The laborers. He said, many will be. Because some are asking, Jesus, if you are there, why did you allow it? Why did you allow it? Did you not see? Look at what we are suffering now. They are blaming Jesus. And that's why they are offended at him. In verses 9 and 10 of Matthew 24, he said, false prophets shall arise. That one. Mm. You know, I like Jesus, you know. He didn't say false pastors. Because pastors teach the word. But those prophets, those say the Lord. And which Lord? <laughs> the Lord from the underworld. The one that's from marine spirit. And they've been prophesying. And listen, such people have kept their congregations. Because there are miracles. Oh, Miracles is not the test of divinity. It's not. Because Pharaoh's astrologers and magicians did multiplied miracles. I mean multiplied. God said, Moses, let there be lies. Let there be flies over all of Egypt. And the magicians of Pharaoh multiplied flies all over Egypt. The divine and the demonic. Let me tell you, the only thing that the devil cannot do is make you holy, make you righteous, make you acceptable with God, to make you know you can stand with God and know that you are accepted and loved, and you are kept by him. That's the only thing the devil cannot do. Any other thing, he can't. Any other thing, he can't. There was somebody very close, even before they got married. It was in the university. We were close. Then he became the king of his area, and he's a big king. Big king, big king. For him to establish his throne, there was, he couldn't, there was another person who was coming to the Bible study and he knows me very well. He said, ah, pray, he was our teacher. When I was a nobody, he was teaching me. That one had to go to him to say, the only way you can establish your throne is go and deal with the spirits in the water. So he took a boat, tell you a true story because it's in the book, and boat are alive. The king is alive, 
and this brother, man of God, is alive. They went in a boat, and when they got somewhere, he told those two of them went in the boat with him. He said, just stay. I'm going in. And he jumped in. And when he went in, things maybe you don't understand. He went, and then he saw the serpent, knocked out the serpent, got to a kingdom, God saw thrones there, and he fought. And the people in the boat had waited five minutes, ten minutes, one hour, two hours. Let me tell you, no matter how good a swimmer, you go inside water in the swimming pool, stay under ten minutes. No, I'm telling you spiritual things. And he won. Dethroned the king there. There. Came back. Got into the boat. And said, went now to the king and said, now your kingdom is established. We do not fight flesh and blood. If you don't warfare, you will die. Period. False prophets. Behind the right. Church censorship. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, it says, you will be trounced in all nations. And when I read that, when I read that, all nations, can I tell you this? I don't know any country that takes Christianity serious. I don't. I don't know any country that takes Christianity serious. If they take Christianity serious, how can they be making some horrible, I mean horrible laws? Listen, those of you who are Nigerians, the federal government of Nigeria does not take Christianity serious. If not, they can't make, they, they can't do some of the things that have been done there. They don't see the church as a power that can contend with them and defeat them. They don't. If they do, they will take the church serious. And they would fear before they make some laws. They will fear before they do some things. Then we have churches there we do. Which street would you go to? You won't find five churches. Which Friday would you be? You won't have night vigils. But the government does not take the Christianity is serious because, listen, the church is not serious enough. Come to the West. Last week, the Methodist Church held their meeting and said, from now we have accepted that man can marry man, woman can marry woman. Methodist Church in the UK, where Charles and John Wesley started. The Catholic Church has not. Church of England has not. The Methodist Church had said now. You know why they said it? Because the government said it. The government said it because the government does not take the church serious. If they took the church serious, they can't make that kind of law. They can't. Said in every nation, your people will be drowned. That's why a Western nation can say it is no more an, if, an offense. It is no more criminal if somebody sleeps with your wife for business purposes. Since it will prosper the business and without economy, we can't have a government. Without money, we can't have a government. And not just one. Here in Europe, go up in Asia, that, and they made it law. So those of you who have wives, if your wife comes and says, um, my boss says, if I put his hand around me, and when I tried to remove it, he looked at me and said, sack or stay. I say, honey, we need money. The mortgage, our children. 
After all, nobody will know. If I didn't tell you, you won't know. She is just do it. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Tell me what Jesus said. I think it's good for us to read the Bible and interpret it in the times in which we live. That there will be superpowers and whatever they say. Look at Africa. Africa is being recolonized by China. Britain have done and gone. The Spanish have done and gone. The French have done and done. Now it is China. And yet we have educated minds. Harvard trained scholars are in Africa. Cambridge and Oxford trained scholars are in Africa who studied economics, who studied political science, who studied history, and yet they can all be bribed and enslave future generations. Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits Three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon. They came out of the mouth, so it will speak. It will speak. Came out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beasts, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles. That's why many are deceived. That's why many are deceived. Listen to this. Even if I don't say anymore, just listen to this. How can you talk about vaccine, 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 and at the end come out and say the vaccine does not cure? And initially you gave $4 billion to only one company to produce. India produces more vaccine and sends it to everybody, but not for the Indians because of foreign exchange. And how many Indians died in the last two weeks? Yet the factories are there, get it and send it. Unclean superpowers with unclean spirits. They tell lies. They enslave. Listen, Jesus cannot be wrong. Jesus cannot be wrong. Let's end up. Israel on siege. You know? Listen to Zechariah 12. He says, And I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding people when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. You know, in May 14th, May 14th, Hamas rained down more than 4,000 rockets. One day, 4,000 rockets. And each missile in the Iron Dome that located, tracked, and disabled the rocket, each one cost $45,000. One. And when you think of four th more than 4,000 that Hamas rained, May 14th, just one and a half months ago. How much did it cost Israel? Yes. Only about, I think, 200 wreck, I mean, rockets landed. All the others, the dome, you know, disabled them. Let's even, of the more than 4,000, let's take 3,000. 3,000 times 45,000. How much is that? For each missile that tracked and knocked down a rocket was 45,000. Multiply 3,000 times $45,000. One day, the enemy of Israel is the same enemy of the church. 
But in the last days, here is good news. Everybody say good news. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. In the last days, the mountain of the house of God shall be established upon the mountains. There will be few, but they will be on fire. And that's why in these days we've seen people in prison. People who killed, and that's why they went to prison. People who did horrible things. Now they were given parole. They came out. They are on fire walking miracles in the streets and saying, it's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. While the mainstream church is quiet. They are in the streets. They've not been to any Bible school. All they knew in prison was Jesus. Born again. And on fire for God. The question is, are we still on fire for God? Has the present condition weakened you? I think two or three Saturdays ago, the prayer team were met here. And I shot a film of a man who had 17 prostitutes, no, 18 prostitutes under him, 18. He was in charge of 18 prostitutes. Even when one was pregnant and she knew it was pregnant, say, you must still be in the street because I must collect money from you. The amount of demons he carried, drugs and demons. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison. 20 years in prison. He did so well, acted so nicely that after, I think, five years or so, they let him out. Listen, but his mother had been praying and praying and praying before he was born, not born again, before he was born. So she said, this is a special child. And here is this man that had grown and he, was, he now had 18 prostitutes, female prostitutes under him. But in prison, when he got born again, listen to me, everything went in a microsecond. God knocked out the desire for drugs. Everything went. And all the demons, everything went. He was invited to a mosque and the mosque had 2,500 people to just go and talk about a mother's prayer. So he got to the mosque. I was talking about, oh, my mother did this and how she prayed. He died, actually. And the mother prayed until he came back to life. So as he was saying it, listen, no Bible. He was just giving testimony. People began falling, slain. <laughs> so they thought it was heat wave in the mosque, not church. They thought it was heat wave that people were falling. So they say, open the window, put on the air conditioner where the people were just falling because of Jesus. When he finished and he went out, they followed him. We want your Jesus. 2,500 Muslims gave their lives to the Lord. A mother's prayer. A mother's prayer. A mother's prayer. On fire for God. This other woman, his wife, she shared her husband with 17 other women. And you know them? You know, it's like Solomon's wife sharing Solomon with, and you know them. At least Solomon's wife knew some. I don't think they knew all the 1,000. But they knew some. She also on fire. She goes to prostitutes. I have been there. I know what it means. I know how much you get. Listen, she was sometimes getting, is it $10,000 per day? Now, male prostitutes here in London, here in London, are getting, male prostitutes are getting 2,000 pounds, pounds per day. I don't mean 1940. I'm not sure. The way I look at you, you earn 2,000 a day. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because from the, the cloth you are wearing, I can tell that um, you don't earn 2,000 a day. You, if I, you look it. <laughs> I'm telling you, there is money there. And that's why some people are there. But look at those who have come out and they are witnessing with miracles for God. 
The question is, my brother, my sister, where are you? Are you still pleasing God always? Number two, are you still practicing faith? The faith in the midst, in the challenging situation you find yourself. Number three, are you prospering God's kingdom? Let me tell you, if you give somebody in the street five pence or one pound, it's all right. That's not God's kingdom. You are charitable. It's good. It's good. You go to a charity shop, you take your old clothes there, it's good. That's not prospering God's kingdom. Prospering God's kingdom is doing it and they know it's for Jesus' sake. So I'm not saying don't be charitable. Be charitable. You give to this cancer research, you give to Red Cross, it's all right. But that's not prospering God's kingdom. God's kingdom is, you know, he that gives a cup of cold water to a servant. In the name of Jesus, that's prospering God's kingdom. Are you still prospering God's kingdom? Are you preaching in season and out of season? Are you prophesying peace to Jerusalem? Shall we stand? You see, the times in which we live, Jesus saw it more than 2,000 years ago. And the question is, are you still boiling hot for Jesus?